Hello, I'm David Harris with Protection Dog Sales, and today we're going to be talking about why genetics matters. Okay, my personal kennel name is Proof and Puddin'. It is a play on words. It was a joke 35 years ago when I came up with the name. Where I was still in college, and we were all talking about you know names for our kennel in the future. And and I've always had a penchant for plays on words. So Proofen in German means test, and I always thought a lot of people talk about their dogs and how wonderful their dog is and why this dog should be bred to that dog, but there's really no proof. So I've named our, my kennel, my future kennel, Proof and Puddin. The proof is in the puddin. The old saying holds a lot of water with me. The proof is in the puddin. So over the years, as I've been training and developing dogs, I've built a body, a massive body of proof about our training program. And one of the things that's interesting to understand about our breeding program is that we actually know a tremendous amount about our dogs because we're breeding our own dogs. Yes, I've imported dogs. Yes, I've brought new bloodlines in. Of course I have. Everybody has to bring in new fresh blood into a breeding program, but our breeding program can be traced back seven or eight now generations of our dogs. Dogs that I personally raised trained, competed with, lived with my children, grew up in my home, I know these dogs. And another really, really unique thing about our breeding program is because of our business, our powerful business, Protection Dog Sales, we actually develop and raise and train our own puppies. We don't sell puppies out of our breeding program to random individuals. We just don't do that. We're raising literally every puppy out of our breeding program and we have a large breeding program. We're breeding well over 150 puppies a year and we're raising virtually every one of those puppies ourselves. So this gives us a tremendous amount of feedback about our breeding program. We get to see does our work work? Is our breeding working? Most breeders sell their puppies and then you call them you know six eight months later and go this puppy's crazy and they'll just have to blame you because you didn't raise the dog right or you didn't train the dog right. They really will have no information. When we raise one of our puppies that we bred in, he's crazy. We know where the blame lies. It lies in the combination of genetics that we chose. So we get a tremendous amount of feedback from our, about our breeding program from actually raising and developing puppies. Imagine a race car uh, mechanic who's never driven a car. How effective would he be as a developer of a race car if he's never driven one? Most breeders have never trained a dog. And if they did train a dog, they were just training a pet dog in their backyard, not a dog that has any level of performance. So when you watch our videos, and you can Google Proof and Puddin, and thousands of videos are gonna pop up, when you watch, you're gonna see a consistent thing. What we are breeding for is not police dogs, not military dogs, not sport dogs not show dogs. So you won't hear us bragging about, oh, our dogs in Europe won this confirmation title and they're V-rated this and they're IPO that. You're not gonna hear us bragging about that, although our dogs have competed successfully and all of our breeding stock is titled, are titled, and have all the health certifications. What you're gonna hear us brag about is trainability, willingness to please, calmness in the home. A lot of the dogs that come over from Europe they're not designed to be calm in the home. They're designed to be literally balls to the walls, hard charging police dogs, military dogs, sport dogs. They need to be like that. We're not breeding for that market. Our market is not people who want to compete. Although our customers, once again, have successfully competed with our dogs because of the balance that we put in there. But trainability, willingness to please, heart, loyalty, these characteristics are hereditary and we bred for them and another really important trait that we bred for is to be hard enough to take on a full-grown man with a weapon physically and mentally hard enough to do that but not hard towards their handler and this is a very hard thing to understand how you can breed a dog to be sensitive and soft to his handler to his owner to his family but hard and mean to the bad guy it's really complicated to understand that, but it's possible. And we've selected very carefully for that trait. And the reason is simple. You're not a professional trainer. 
You're not a professional handler. You're not a policeman or a military guy. You don't need a dog that's going to challenge you and be physically hard and tough with you. But you do need a dog that if the chips are down and someone's kicking the door down and coming in to harm your family is not going to be the first person out the back door. That dog's going to run for his life if he's not mentally or physically hard. So we have to breed a dog that can handle the pressure from the helper, but not be so hard that you can't train. So that's just a little overview of what we're breeding with protection dog cells, proof and pudding bloodlines, proof and German Shepherds. We also breed Dobermans and have been breeding Dobermans now for about 15 years. So we have a very nice line of Dobermans and we're starting to breed giant Schnauzers. They're a very popular breed because of the low shedding, but yet there's not a lot of breeders in the United States that understand that breed. So we've taken on the task to slowly but surely develop a line of giant Schnauzers that have the characteristics of a personal protection dog. And we know those characteristics. We've been training dogs now for over three decades. So we have a really good program. We understand our dogs. We understand how to breed. And I just wanted to, you know, have a little conversation about genetics matter. People call me all the time and say, I don't care about the pedigree. I'm not going to breed this dog. That is a fallacy. It's, pedigree is really, really important. If you can sing, it's because someone in your genetic history had the ability to sing, mom or dad or grandmother. So if your parents are mathematicians, odds are pretty good that you're going to be good at math. Not guaranteed, but the odds are in your favor. So when we breed dogs that are trained, titled, have been successful, that increases the likelihood that our puppies are going to have those traits. And we've worked that out over many, many generations. So. Thanks for taking the time to listen. I know it's kind of boring to sit here and listen to some guy yammer on about genetics, but genetics matter, and I wanted to take a minute to talk about it.